Now, if there's one question that you ladies and gentlemen have been asking me, what happened to Ning Wong? In my opinion, Ning Wong kind of fell off a little bit, didn't get some artifact support, didn't get any new characters that worked with her very well. I know. Before you comment, I've been playing with the whole time. It's totally fine. I I kill every floor in the abyss in 12 seconds. You just you're just stupid content creator. Okay, you're just dumb. Maybe that's true. But you know what? Ningguang is back now. Did you not see that footage in for like 36k per normal attack plus? Oh, very very strong right there. So let's talk about Ningguang and why she is so good with Yunjin. Now, if you look at normal attack for Ningguang, it looks terrible, right? 47% at talent level nine. I think it's 50% flat. 50.4, excuse me at talent level 10 there. You're like, this is awful. But remember, Ning Wong shoots two little rocks out every time that she attacks. And this allows you to scale super well off of Yoon Jin's elemental burst, the Cliff Breaker's banner, because this is gonna be applied to each of those rocks, which also means it only takes 15 normal attacks to meet that max trigger quota of 30 because each rock has one normal attack and it does a lot of bonus damage you guys saw there because it scales off of your Ningguang's crit chance crit damage and not to mention her damage bonus up as well which you can hit quite a lot of because she does have ascension for geo damage put her on a geo goblet you can do a lot of cool stuff out there with a Ningguang build constellation one piercing fragments your normal attacks do AOE damage, which means that if you have a couple people standing next to each other or you're a wild man and you're using some sort of animal character with her to scoop them all up, you can just cleave down people with this team, which is awesome. Makes her normal attacks so much better than before because she used to hit for like 2K per rock, 3K per rock, and now you can hit for like 20K per rock and then finish it off with a nice burst combo. So let's talk about some changes here to how you're gonna be playing Ning Wong with this build. I will also talk about some different artifacts. If you don't wanna use this one, you can use instead. So I am using the Shimanawa's Reminiscent sets. This was uh, one of the sets that I had on Hu Tao. I don't use a set that often. And you look at the set first and you go, this combos, uh, breaks the combo actually with Ning Wong, right? You want to pop Ning Wong, plop her wall down, shoot some rocks, charge attack, elemental burst, plop the wall down again, and charge attack again. And you can't do that because you're siphoning off your elemental skill energy. That doesn't matter when you're using her with Yunjin because a lot of the time, you don't really want to use your elemental burst right away anyway. You want to use it after Yunjin's buff is gone because you don't want to be locked in that elemental burst animation that just eats into your Yunjin's buff. You're gonna lose a couple of seconds from the buff. So what you do is you use this set, gives you that two piece for 18% attack. And then the four piece here, you plop your wall down, you walk through your wall for that 12% geo damage bonus from Ning Wong's good old Ascension here as well, which is gonna be awesome. And then you go back out there and you have this 50% normal and charge attack damage for 10 seconds. So you're gonna be normal attacking a whole bunch, eat through most of your stacks or all of them, and then you blow up your wall. You throw all your rocks at them. You hit them with your charge attack right before this wears off. You throw it on your wall again, and then you swap her out and you regen energy for everyone. And it works out fairly, very well. Now, if you're like, that sounds fine and dandy, I don't wanna mess with that. That's totally reasonable as well. Just wear two-piece Shimanawa's Reminiscence or two-piece Gladiator's Finale Archaic Petra set for that 15% Geo damage bonus to help out your burst damage a little bit, but you're gonna be missing on that 50% normal in charge attack bonus which is gonna neuter a little bit of the damage you get from Yunji and your team. It also is gonna neuter uh, that elemental burst into the good old sparkling scatter. That doesn't matter as much though, if you're not C6. If you are C6, so you get those seven Jade Stars. Oh, your charge attack hits like a truck with all those buffs up. Now, weapon selection for five stars. I really like the Lost Prayer to the Sacred Winds a lot. 33% crit rate is very hard to negotiate against. It also gives you some stacking element damage bonus up. And if you're using her as your main damage dealer, you're gonna be out there, you're gonna get max stacks of this eventually. And this is gonna be a very significant damage increase. If you have something else like the Skyward Atlas or the Memory of Dust, feel free to throw those on instead and you're just gonna have to build for a little bit more crit rate. The good old Dodoka Tales actually isn't the worst thing ever in this build because normal attacks increase your charge attack damage, which she does do a good amount of charge attack damage as well, especially when Yunjin's buff's not around. And then when you charge attack, you're gonna increase your attack as well. Another very fantastic weapon is actually the Solar Pearl because it gives you first and primarily 
crit chance increase. That is so powerful. Then it's gonna buff up different parts of Ningguang's kit as well. In Solar Pearl, if I had to say what her best four-star weapon is, it is that one as well. Now, another one you could try as well is the good old Wid Sith, and this will allow you to get some crit damage from the catalyst, and you can roll a high roll attack percent bonus or elemental damage bonus up as well. And if you roll an elemental damage bonus up on the Wid Sith with the crit damage, you're gonna be really buffing a lot of Eugene's skill damage. So this will be the most burst weapon you could have in Genshin if you roll that elemental damage percent bonus up because you could be rocking up to 200% elemental damage bonus, high crit damage build with some decent crit rate, right, in your subsets as well. You can see even higher numbers than what you see in this video because this will give you more damage bonus up in crit damage than even the weapon I'm currently using, the Lost Prayer to the Sacred Winds. You have to keep in mind that the Witsith has that cooldown on it. You don't have full access to it all of the time. Everyone's favorite floor 12. We're just gonna throw out a lot of our combo stuff here. Boom. We want the wolves to kind of group up here because if they group up, yeah, we can try to cleave them with the C1. This is pretty, and c one because it's AOE actually does more damage than our normal attack right now, go figure. And then we'll just kind of do this. We can save our skill, I do believe. Nice. All right. A little bit of this. Uh-huh. And then full combo again, and then just normal attack spamsies. And if these wolves would love to stay together, don't backflip, stop backflipping. We don't want to see the backflip. We'll throw this out. Lots of damage. Reset and ready to go for round two here. Oh, we got the lovely Geo Vishhab. It's my favorite in all of the world. All right, so we got the Geo Vish. Obviously with the Geo Rezes. Just trying to cleave him up. Oh, I didn't I didn't hit the, the Ben and Burst, that's sad. Just keep going, just keep going. Just keeping them on, keep keeping on. And then last but not least, more, more Geo dudes. Okay, right on bro, whatever. Whew. Then you end with the full combo. I didn't get it all buffed again. But I've been having fun with this. Oh, rude. Rude. And we're back in it, ready to rock and roll. ER and all my supports, as usual. And uh, fun times ensue. Fun times ensue. Of course, the one time I charged attack, the dude's... The dude's right there. Almost ready. Come on, little dogs. Come on, little dogs. Come on, little dogs. Now, I'm not going to say Ningguang's like super triple S here in 2022 or anything here, but this is the strongest this character's been in a long time. And it's mainly thanks to Yunjin as well. So this is a very interesting team composition as well. Goro wasn't really helping out a whole bunch in this team. The combination of Yunjin and Bennett, Goro was giving her some crit damage as well with the C6 here. And also Goro does buff up Yunjin's defense with his uh, ascension skill here. His A1 is gonna give her this 25%, which lasts while she's even off the battlefield. So that was buffing her up a little bit there as well.